All right, the setup we have here is we have channel two hooked up to the microcontroller to measure the actual duty cycle output, and channel one is hooked up to the solid state relay to measure its response to that on-off duty cycle. So we have our period set to five milliseconds or 5,000 microseconds on here and a 50% duty cycle. And if we go to the oscilloscope, you can see we get a nice square wave coming out of the microcontroller, but if you look at channel one on top there, uh, what you're seeing is that there is a lag in the response time turning on right there. And currently we're at 10 milliseconds per division. So that's about a two millisecond lag time. So if you get a little bit more, go to one millisecond per division. And then we can go and really see what this this on time looks like here. Uh, a little bit more detail. So you can see it's got actually about a 2.4 millisecond to completely come on. So as it follows that curve, starting right about there, it doesn't come on till right about there. So when we're adjusting our duty cycles, we have to take into account that the solid state relay is uh, not always reacting, you know, that, that lag in the on time needs to be accounted for, even though we are getting a nice square wave to it. Uh, so if we go to a uh, let me zoom out. Twenty percent duty cycle at this. We can see that we're not getting quite as much on time there. Uh, as we go in, we're just not going to get anything. Uh, and you can clearly see down at the bottom that uh, the square wave being output. So this also asks the question, if we make the duty cycle too fast, the microcontroller won't be able to respond to the switching, or, or the, uh, excuse me, the solid state relay. So if I change that to a one millisecond duty cycle, which is inside of that 2.2 second response time on the solid state relay, uploading here and we go set to a 50% duty cycle so now what we can see is we can see our nice square wave on the bottom there but as you can see the top is just a straight line because that microcontroller or excuse me that solid state relay just doesn't have enough time to react to that signal so if I go say a 90% now we can see that it does have a little bit of time to react, but the uh, that uh, microcontroller is just uh, the signal coming out of it's too fast. So we'll go back and see what a set that back to a ten millisecond upload. Go back, we'll set this back to 50%. And now that we've got a longer period, now we can see that we're getting a much, much better response uh, out of the solid state relay. So when setting the period of our duty cycle, we do need to uh, account for the properties of that solid state relay. And this up here is software that I wrote to basically control the brightness of this bulb using a solid state relay that is on that piggyback board right there. And in this particular demonstration, we're gonna see what happens when your pulse width modulation is not synchronized with your AC line signal, is that we're gonna get a strobing effect on that bulb. As you can see right there, that uh, and that's at about a 14% duty cycle right there. And then as I s increase that width, that strobing effect will become less pronounced uh, as I keep, continue to 
increase that duty cycle. And you can just go to 80. And you can see that strobing effect is almost gone. And then just. All right, this video is the same demonstration, but this time we're using an incandescent bulb instead of an LED. So let's go ahead and turn on the bulb. And what we'll see is that with the incandescent bulb, which is heat, that we don't get the uh, strobing effect. And you can see the effect of the dimming pulse width modulation. And you see that uh, on the incandescent bulb, we aren't getting that strobing effect. So what we're going to have to do with that LED bulb is effectively get the pulse width modulation uh, synchronized with that AC line voltage where it's plugged in.